Hello Metalheads, welcome to another episode of History Bites and today we're at the Lunt Roman Fort at Baggington just on the outskirts of Coventry. Let's go and have a look around. The Lunt Roman Fort. This is a reconstruction of a fort that was built between the years AD 60 and 61 following the Boudican Revolt, where the Britons revolted against the Roman occupation of Britain. We stood here at the, at the east gate of the fort. It would have originally had four gate houses, north, south, east and west. Before we enter the fort, let's just take a quick look at the ramparts over here, the palisades up on top and the defensive ditch that would have run originally all the way around the perimeter of the fort. Now it's thought that at the bottom of this defensive ditch it would have been a really steep ankle breaker so any attackers that were trying to storm the fort would have come to some kind of grief down in the bottom and then tried to get themselves up through the knotty brambles on the top that looks pretty defensive to me we're inside the fort now building ahead of us is the granary and laid out in concrete down on the floor is where some of the barrack houses would have stood and over to the right hand side is a reconstruction of the gyrus which is a rather unique feature within Roman forts and especially in Britain. We stood outside the gyrus now just before we go in and it was uh, used by the cavalry units within the fort. I do believe there were as many as 120 cavalry troops stationed here along with 480 soldiers. Now you'd have needed cavalry units to suppress any remnants of the Boudican revolt and maybe the native Britons had their horses taken from them and they were brought here for breaking. So let's just walk around this corner here and enter the gyrus. This is 34 metres in diameter. Looks very similar to a modern day manage where you'd lunge horses and train them, break them in. Now in the summer the fort's open to visitors and they have gladiatorial battles in here in the gyrus, which is quite an entertaining day out.
by 64 AD. Things are quieting down with the Akeni tribe, so the fort was reduced in size. And by AD 70, there were even fewer barracks because the legions had moved on to Wales to subdue the Silurids tribe. Archaeological digs here have unearthed bits of horse tack and pieces of armour. We've got some more buildings marked out in concrete here. Now these are the barrack houses and the centurion's quarters. Six barrack blocks, 80 men in each. Hold on there for a little while if you want to read it or maybe pause the video and look back. Here we have yet another building laid out in concrete. Very well signposted here. Stabilis, the stables. Presumably where the cavalry units kept their horses or where the horses that were taken from the native British population were housed while they were broken and then sent on to other units. We're now at the Principalia, the headquarters of the regiment quite large, it runs alongside the granary, big square building, the shrine would have stood that concrete block there. I guess all the organisation of the foot, running of the fort management at the local areas was planned from here. Huge building in fact. Some concrete pads there on the floor. I wonder if maybe they're the seated columns at the entrance to the place. And perhaps important things of the regiment were kept in here, the standards. And here we have a reconstruction of the granary that was built and in use between 64 and 78 AD. It's pretty central in the fort, keep it away from being burnt down from any attacks from the outside. All the grain food, supplies for the legion would have been kept in here and it serves as a little museum nowadays. So I'm now stood dead central in the fort, crossroads between the north south and east and west roads. So over by those trees would have been the west gate. That side must be north. The reconstruction stands to the east. And where those modern metal gates are, I'm guessing is the location of the southern gate. You can just make out the roadway position of it through the centre here, meeting up with the east-west road. I'm inside the granary now, rather noisy from visitors, so I'll keep it brief in here. We've got a reconstructed 3D map of the fort, how it would have looked 
back all those millennium ago. Quite sizeable, you can make out the gyrus there, the circle, the principalia. There you go, that's where all the official business of the fort would have been done. All the barrack houses running off it. Wow. I like this. I'll spin you around. And we've got uh, an horse. Got a cavalry rider on it. But no worries at all. Take a wander around this way. Little Roman shrine there, some amphoras. We're not going to dwell too long here, otherwise, I'll spoil your visit. So come and explore. Because they've got this open day today. They've got lots of Roman legionaries dressed up entertaining the kids. Roman standards around the top frieze of the museum. We've got the events of Roman history. We've got a huge great ballista, is it? Huge great bow. Plate armour, shields, pelums, got the lot here. And I'll tell you what, for a four quid visit, you're not going to go wrong. Oh, I'm in my element. Pesky bloody Romans. Quickly, poke the camera in this case here. These are the bits that we go out looking for. We've got Roman pottery here. We pick these up as surface finds. Roman games. Don't know whether that pan's original or a reconstruction. So cool looking belt buckles. See you in there's a Quite a zoomorphic piece there, snake. Roaches, very ornate fibula there. Still not found a fibula. Pins, ring fragments, necklace, bits and pieces here. Poor shoes, bits of iron work. I suppose it's a lesson to dig your iron signals, really, isn't it? Fantastic. On a time scale, the fort wasn't actually in use for all that long. By AD 79, Agricola was the governor of Britain and he was pushing north to subdue the tribes up there and the fort was finally abandoned by AD 80. Now, as far as finds go here only one coin has ever been found of the Emperor Gallienus who was ruled from AD 260 to 268 so it'd have been a quite a grotty little third century coin. wonder how many more coins lie underneath here, metalheads. <laughs> hey, would you want to get your detector on this ground? See what you could pull up. Absolutely wonderful piece of English history. £3.50 admission. 80p booking fee, £4.30 and you're in. Can't grumble at that, can you? Right, that's it. 
I'm going to chip off, stitch this video together, get it uploaded, and I'll catch you either on the next episode of History Bites or out in the fields metal detecting. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.